This video demonstrates different diabetic eye lesions. For comparison, a normal eye is initially described followed by the diseases. As you can see, a normal eye is surrounded by periorbital fat and muscles. The conjunctiva with its sclera and bubba part covers the cornea. Now, you will see a quick sequential exposure of the remaining parts of the eyeball from outside to inside. Now, this sclera has been removed to expose the aqueous humor, the complete choroid, including the iris and the ciliary body. Removal of the aqueous humor gives a better view of the lens which is present behind the iris. The choroid, once completely removed, shows the lens with its suspensory ligaments and whole of the retina filled up with vitreous humor. Now you will see the inner view of the retina after removal of the lens and the vitreous humor. As we remove the vitreous humor and zoom into the posterior parts of the retina, we can clear clearly visualize fovea and macula on one side and central retinal vessels on the other side. Diabetic eye diseases include diabetic retinopathy, cataract and glaucoma. <laughs> The diabetic retinal changes are called diabetic retinopathy and is divided into non proliferated diabetic retinopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. This retina shows mild NPDR. As you can see, there are microaneurysms in the artery. Retinal microaneurysms are the most typical lesions of diabetic retinopathy. Retinal microaneurysms are caused by damage to blood vessels. This is the next stage of diabetic retinopathy. It is of moderate severity. In this stage, we see at least one retinal hemorrhage, microaneurysm, or one hard exudate, cotton wool spot, or venous bleeding. Having a view going inside, we can see the fovea, the macula, some cotton wool spots, hard exudate, and microaneurysms with venous beadings. Intraretinal hemorrhages are also prominent. You can visualize the points told by me moments before. That is, increased number of aneurysms, cotton wool spots, venous beadings and hard exudate with retinal hemorrhages. Going ahead, we can see the case of severe NPDR. In severe case of NPDR, microaneurysms become more prominent, increase in number, size and distribution. The venous beatings also involve two of more two of more retinal quadrant, quadrants intraretinal hemorrhages can also be seen in one or more quadrant. Now you can see the PDR.
New vascularization becomes prominent in addition to all the changes seen in previous retinopathies. The new vascularization predisposes to the vitreous hemorrhages caused by ruptured aneurysms and pre-retinal hematoma. The neovascularization also leads to preretinal hemorrhages displacing the vitreous. As you can see, all lesions of NPDR are also present in PDR. Now we shall focus on the different types of cataract commonly present in diabetic mellitus. As you can see, the three common types of cataracts possible are namely the central nuclear, the peripheral cortical and the posterior subcapsular cataract. Glaucoma is commonly seen in diabetes. As you can see, this visual shows the flow of intraocular fluid from ciliary body to the gap between the iris and the cornea, iris and the anterior surface of lens and further to trabecular meshwork present in the angle between the iris and the cornea which is blocked in diabetes. This causes abnormal backflow of the fluid from the anterior chamber of the eyeball to posterior vitreous, vitreous chamber, thus increasing the intraocular pressure. The intraocular pressure causes pressure atrophy of optic nerve causing the cupping of the optic disc. 